Hi everyone and welcome to Biology Professor. Today we're going to talk about the catalase test. So before we start talking about the procedure for the catalase test, let's talk about what catalase is. It is a pretty common enzyme. Remember an enzyme is a biological catalyst, something that catalyzes a reaction, helps speed it up. So it's an enzyme in either aerobic organisms or really any organism that lives in an oxygen rich environment. And that's really the key. So even facultative anaerobes, those that carry out anaerobic respiration, who don't uh, necessarily use oxygen, but, but sometimes do. So they can be anaerobic or aerobic. But any organism that's living in an oxygen rich environment probably is going to need to have catalase. Because catalase catalyzes a really important reaction to break down byproducts of oxygen metabolism. So what catalase does is it catalyzes a reaction where it breaks down hydrogen peroxide. So it breaks down hydrogen peroxide into two products, water and oxygen gas. And this is important because it protects cells from oxidative damage that comes from reactive oxygen species. So reactive oxygen species, sometimes abbreviated as ROS, these refer to things like hydrogen peroxide, um, superoxide, um, anything that's got like a, 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 an oxygen free radical, like a hydroxyl free radical, because these can cause a lot of oxidative damage to cells. They can damage proteins, and even more importantly, they can damage DNA. So it's important that we, elim that we, that we reduce that damage in cells that live in these oxygen-rich environments. And all of these reactive oxygen species are natural byproducts of normal oxygen metabolism. And so catalase is the enzyme that specifically is taking care of um, the hydrogen peroxide uh, portion of, that, uh, of those byproducts. So the catalase test, which is our main focus today, is actually a diagnostic tool. So used in laboratories, um, used in hospitals, to help distinguish or differentiate between um, different types of bacteria that might otherwise look the same under a microscope. So for example, staphylococci, which are gram positive, are catalase positive. This means they produce catalase. On the other hand, streptococci and enterococci, which are also gram positive, are catalase negative. So uh, staphylococci, streptococci, and enterococci, they're all cocci, meaning that they're, they're round, uh, and they're all gram positive, which means that they can be difficult to distinguish even with uh, something like a gram stain but they can be distinguished with this catalase test. Um, also, bacillus and clostridium species, again, both gram positive, both rods, and they can be distinguished with a catalase test because bacillus species are typically catalase positive, while clostridium species are typically catalase negative. And so, now let's talk about the catalase test itself. Two really uh, critical factors for the catalase test that make it such a great diagnostic tool is the fact that the procedure for the catalase test is really fast and also really cheap. So that just makes it really easy and convenient to carry out. And this is what you do. You mix one or sometimes more than one, um, depending on the size of the colony, um, one or a few colonies from a culture that's been growing for about 18 to 24 hours into a few drops of 3% hydrogen peroxide on a slide. And so here we have a slide. Here we have a, uh, you know, a few drops of hydrogen peroxide. Here's a few drops of hydrogen peroxide. If you have rapid formation of a large amount of bubbles, that means that you have a catalase positive organism. 
So if a catalase negative organism is added to the hydrogen peroxide, you won't see any bubbles form, or if there are any bubbles, they'll be um, they'll, they'll form slowly and it'll be a very weak reaction. Whereas if it's a catalase positive organism that's being added to the hydrogen peroxide, you're going to see really rapid formation of lots and lots of bubbles. And you might be asking yourself, well, where are these bubbles coming from? And it's this right here. So this oxygen that is a product of this reaction that catalase catalyzes, this oxygen is a gas. And so it's given off in the form of gas, which causes the bubbles to form. And there's a couple of things to keep in mind if you're doing a catalase test. One is that you can't use cultures that have been grown on blood auger. That's because blood auger actually is a, a bacterial growth medium that contains red blood cells. Red blood cells themselves have catalase. And so when you collect the colonies from blood auger, you're going to also be collecting red blood cells, which have catalase in them and can give you a false positive. Another thing to keep in mind is that if you're testing some of these uh, anaerobic cultures, you might use 15% hydrogen peroxide, um, and that just is going to help to give sort of a stronger, um, more uh, uh, easily observable reaction. And then also, if you have slow, weak bubble formation, meaning bubbles that are forming um, just a couple at a time, it might take a few minutes for them to show up, that's actually due to light exposure. I think we've all seen hydrogen peroxide at the grocery store and it comes in that brown bottle. And that's because hydrogen peroxide itself will break down into water and oxygen gas just due to the presence of light, although that's much, much slower than catalase. Catalase is actually one of the fastest enzymes, uh, has one of the fastest turnover rates of all known enzymes. And so light can catalyze this reaction, but it's much, much slower. And so if you have a slide sitting out for a few minutes and you're getting a few bubbles, that's due to light exposure, not to be confused with the presence of catalase. So that's it for today. If you're interested in learning more about different um, bacteria species oxygen needs, you can see my video on um, bacteria oxygen preferences. If you're interested in learning more about enzymes, you can see my video on introduction to enzymes. But that's it for today. Thanks for watching Biology Professor.